Good morning. This is Andrew Sheets with the Third Heaven Traveler. The Third Heaven Traveler is a blog about our spiritual life in Jesus Christ and Him in us who believe on Him and applying this existence to our daily lives. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, King James Bible. How much longer, Lord? We're asking the same question. This blog study is direct is written for, and this YouTube post is strictly for the saints, those of us who belong to the Church of Philadelphia, who are waiting, looking up with our blessed hope and asking the same question, how much longer, Lord? When I put this blog together, I, well, first of all, I received a wonderful, heartfelt email from some subscribers uh, from YouTube, and I will read the letter they sent me or the email they sent me. And when I put this, I knew I had to blog this. I knew I had to video this because just a few days ago, my brother in Christ, James Van Patten, and I were talking about the very same thing. And when I was putting this together, immediately I wanted to write this preface, woe be to you, post-tribbers, mockers, and scoffers, <clears throat> because the Church of Philadelphia, we know we're looking for our blessed hope. We know that we're there right any moment, any moment. Go ahead, mockers. <clears throat> Go ahead, scoffers. Do your thing. Pour it on. But I'm telling you, poster boy, Bruce Peters, and all of your kind, there's many of you, you wicked souls, desiring the day of the Lord. You know, you're going to get what you're asking for. I'm convinced. But I'm telling you, that I was immediately moved in the spirit to post here in this picture the Rahab, the harlot, the Canaanite prostitute and the city, the massive fortress of Jericho, the one by grace, a type and shadow of grace who was saved. This nobody the worst of the worst known in society, the Hebrew children, the two Hebrew spies, Israelite spies, they were saved by this harlot. They were released and saved by the cord. The cord rope that she used was noted and study it for yourself as red, the bloodline red of grace, the types and shadows. Uh, the, this harlot, Imagine her, Rahab the harlot, the Moabite Ruth. They're going to stand as a witness against you, post-tribbers. Oh, that doesn't have anything to do with us. Oh, yes, it does. The bride of Christ, the one in Israel, you mockers and scoffers, the ones who come against the pre-tribulation rapture. The ones who say that the Lord, that the body of Christ is not the bride. The ones who don't want the church in the book of Revelation. You will be judged by Rahab the harlot. You will be joined in by Rome, uh, correction, Genesis chapter 48. Read this study. I almost feel like going in and doing this study all over again. But, you know, read the study links. But those of you who come against the pre-tribulation rapture, we know we're there. You're going to be judged by the harlot, Rahab. She was saved. Oh, her? Yes. Oh, you Judaizers and you, all of you that think that put the church not in revelation to reign with Christ and rule on the earth. You will have her standing there. You will have Ruth the Moabite. These are in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Enough said. On these individuals. But now the Lord has brought this to my attention. Let's talk about the walls of Jericho. The walls of Jericho. This was a Canaanite fortress. Now, bear with me here. Yes, I know that 
that archaeology has these walls at 20, 30 feet high. They were super massive, strong walls built by superhumans. By the way, let me talk about that. Let's say, and I do believe that the walls of Jericho, the ancient, most ancient city in history, I believe that it did go, come before, well before the creation, which is 6,000 years ago of Adam. I believe that when that the walls of Jericho were built by superhumans, meaning, let's be honest, these were built by fallen angels. I'm not going to go into all that right now. Just as the pyramids, if people think that human beings built those pyramids, different subject, but I want to focus on the actual city of Jericho. How impossible. It wasn't only that they were, that okay, they were higher than uh, three men stacked on top of each other. But if you take a look at this image and, I, and see where I'm going with this, the su superhuman, unimaginable defense of this city, it was built on this slope that would require a puny man to come up and then climb up and then come over. It was impenetrable. These walls could not be broken because superhumans built them. And here come the little grasshoppers. They would saw giants in the land. Now, these giants were the offspring, the Nephilim of the, what, fallen angels and human women that came in after 6,000 years before the flood and even bloodlines after the flood, different subject. The walls of Jericho, the Canaanites from the harlot Rahab, who saved the Hebrew spies by the grace, the type and shadow of grace spared from the destruction that would follow. Yes, the captain of the guard, Joshua, the, or I'm sorry, the captain of the guard, Jesus Christ himself, appeared into Joshua. Read it in Joshua chapter 6. They made seven rounds. Think of the number seven. Think of seven, the number seven in 7,000 years. Think of seven being the, what, the time of rest and coming into the millennial kingdom. Think of the mighty chauffeur blast. Think of the seventh day rest. Connect that with the sign of Jonah in the third day. You can read it in my third day prophecy. Know who the kinsman, your kinsman redeemer is, our Melchizedek, the king and priest. Yes, we will reign with him. Know what the Church of Philadelphia, it's in all my studies. But now that background information, I just had to share it. I received the following email, and I think we need to talk about this. And what, look at my response. So these persons write, uh, we're both former Marines. <coughs> were straightforward regarding the eminence of what is about to occur in our country and World War III. Hello, we know, they know, especially Marines. Military, we know what's coming. Even though we are aware of so many facets of the war on humanity from genetic engineering, controlled food demolition, yeah, geoengineering in the skies, and the list goes on and on, it is clear that we are on the brink of the rapture or destruction, and I pray it's the rapture of the destruction. I want to stop here. I'm telling this dear saint, my fellow brother and sister in the Lord. This is a husband and wife here. I want to tell them, Brother James and I were talking about the same thing. Listen, we see it's all coming down. I mean, we we could talk about the civil war that's getting ready to erupt any second in the United States. Uh, we've got the Russia thing. We've got the Ukraine thing. We've got the North Korea thing. We've got the China thing, the Taiwan thing. It goes on and on and on. It doesn't stop. The pestilences. We see the Antichrist spirit rising. We see the second... Uh, horse of the apocalypse the rider of the second horse which we know the what is the after the antichrist is revealed in the first seal that we see the second seal opening which we know is going to be global war and we see it here we see the third meaning the famine like never known before the black horse we see the great pale pale is not green by the way people pale is not green there's so much false teaching out there no it's not the palestinian flag no Pale means gray. Uh, that will happen with the pestilence. We see every day there's a new Ebola, whatever, three are coming out. and uh, So we can go on and on, but how much will we get to see? So this 
uh, Saint, my sister writes and her husband, do you have any thoughts about what they're telling people regarding self-defense and storing food? Let's talk about it. Uh, why do uh, we do some of this, but in reality, if it gets to this kind of escalation, I just can't see anyone surviving it. Now, this is a former Marine talking, right? I've been watching strongly since 2011 and was wondering how far we would go before our Lord removes us in the Harpasso. Yes, we all are asking that. Brother James and I, Brother James is a Marine. I'm retired a naval, uh, Navy guy. We, how far will we see? I mean, to what limit? Uh, they write, Matthew 24, 38 is clear and truly shows me that we are on the precipice of destruction, not eating, drinking, or giving in marriage. Uh, your input would be appreciated. Thank you. My response, thank you for the email. Thank you for, uh, th thank you. And please let me know your thoughts as well. I really do. Thank you. I will check out the link they sent. Now, your question uh, they want me to know if I have any thoughts and want my input. So I say, uh, Janet, I have their name in here. My response, definitely, as do all of the saints, we all know that we are at the very, very end of this age. Any moment, we know we will be harpazoed out of this polluted, fallen world. Yes, we know any second. Uh, I write also, likewise, I've been watching closely since 2010, actually, and even was strongly led by the Spirit of our Lord to post a video and start a YouTube channel. As, as you can see, go to my YouTube channel, you see that uh, the first video I ever did, in fact, was over well over 10, 12 years ago uh, called Time Has Run Out. Uh, from one of the most terrifying visions I could ever imagine. I'm not going to go through that now. You can read it on my YouTube channel. And, and by the way, I didn't even want to do that. I was like, I, Lord, I don't want to do it. And the Lord would not. I couldn't sleep. Like, I got to put it out. I go, I don't do videos. I don't like some of these. Some people love being on videos, man. You can tell they just love it. There's a oh, look at I hate it. And in fact, most of my videos, I don't even have my face on there. I'm putting this on here because I want to put a personal touch on this. But uh, I just want to say that I didn't want to do it. And so I continue that I did. I started the video because I know where time is short. But I say also, you both as Marines know it's a joke. And people listen to this. People, please listen to this. It's a joke to assume these preppers are going to last very long. Quote, making their stand. Note, we must also know that if, now listen to this carefully, if the Holy Spirit gives us the unction to make a stand, we must. Now, what am I talking about? It could be anything. It could be the doorbell ringing and uh, ATF agents are out there saying, hey, bring all your guns out. Or, uh, hey, someone said you've got a Bible in your home. Bring it out. I I mean, if, if the Lord says, no, I'm drawing the line, do what you got to do. It's not going to, I mean, do it if the Holy Spirit does that. But, but bottom line, let me continue. But building an underground bunker, honestly, people, it's a joke. You know, and I had... A, a, a jacked up hyper dispensation uh, uh, correction. He was a hyper dispensationalist. He was a hyper grace guy. One of these conspiracy QAnon Christian, so-called Christians. He tried to convince me and my family that we had to move into a compound and beg me to get a compound going with him and his family, uh, money, everything. And, uh, th and I told him, I said, so, so-and-so I said, okay, then what, then what we just sit there, Days go by, my pass in the weeks or months, but let's say it goes up. I, I take my 150 rounds of I've got 45 and 9 millimeter, whatever, whatever. Uh, we're, they're coming over the wall, just keep shooting away. <laughs> they can come in with, they want to hit us with an, a missile, a drone missile. They could take us out in a thousand different ways, a thousand different ways. So, okay, whatever. But, oh, food. Uh, first thing that scavengers are going to do, an EMP boss or whatever, they're going to come for food. They're going to be looking for food. And, got they're, you know, you can hold them off for so long, then so what? 
But regarding the rapture, before the rapture, before we're taken out of here, how much will we suffer? That's the question. Well, let's talk about this. So we're all asking, how far will we go before we're removed? And I know we, the saints, we all know that we are at any moment. And we're still, every one of us, we're still shocked. We're still here. But we also know that the Holy Spirit still restrains and hold back the Antichrist. Daniel's 70th week, we know the tribulation until the last soul he wants to come in comes in. This could be hours from now. I could not even finish this video, and it can happen. Or it could be days. But honestly, none of us can see years, really. But even if it is yours, let's talk about this. Okay, let's say it is yours. We know the Lord will prepare us for what's coming our way. I'm not talking about the tribulation. We're not going to go into the tribulation. We know that. I'm talking about how far before the first seal, before the Antichrist is revealed, which we will be raptured before he's revealed. But I'm saying, how far will this go? Well, I want to share a story. And the Lord put this on my heart to share with this individual. And I want to share with others. When I was called to go into Vietnam back in 2005, six, many years ago, to go to Vietnam for, and live there for years and share Jesus Christ with the Vietnamese, I was scared for many reasons. And later I found out I did suffer greatly. While there, I suffered lymphatic tuberculosis. I had two very serious motorbike accidents uh, pulled out and was ridiculed, killed, I pulled out of my house, was called down before a communist and ridiculed and threatened I, by public officials. I, could, I don't want to go into that, but it was humiliating. I was an outcast. I had, uh, I being a retired uh, naval officer, had my peers uh, reaching me through Facebook and whatnot, was saying, what happened to you? Uh, we don't understand what happened to you. What what when my peers, many of them are millionaires today. And here I am sitting in a little nowhere place. I had f my peers mocking me. I had family mocking me. I had uh, uh, my ex left. My uh, son said I was working for the devil, et cetera, et cetera. But during the suffering, let me tell you this. Now, I know this is, you're probably saying that's nothing what, will happen to us up to the tribulation. Well, it's, it gives me an idea. Things that I went through, things that I went through, I never, ever thought I would ever want to go through. And I know the saints out there can relate to this. But while I was going through it, and one day on Facebook or on a Zoom, uh, on a Zoom or a Skype call, one of my former contacts was like, wow, what, what? And, and here I'm looking at him on the camera and he's in a million dollar home and he's uh, blah, 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 going on and on. Oh yeah, you were on this. You should have been here there. And he's like, what happened to you? And, and I was going through the suffering and I said to him, I don't know, but I know God knows. And I know that he's taking me through this. And it was joy unspeakable. I put this in red letters. My suffering was joy unspeakable. I got to, I, that's the day I got to meet. I told this in another blog. I'll put it in the links. The day I got to meet Joe. I really got to meet Joe. And it was joy unspeakable because God will never call us into something without equipping us. And in the midst of that, and I know I'm not saying this to be some, I'm being honest with you. I was at peace and I had joy, unspeakable joy, because I knew my Lord had it. He was with me all the way. And he's like, I've got this. You're going to be just fine. Yeah. The day when I was laying there in the hospital uh, in a third world. I was laying on the on a nurse's table. The nurses were eating their breakfast. They didn't have a bed. I'm laying there on this nurse's table. 
And anyway, I had tears coming down my eyes and they were like looking at me eating their breakfast because they were trying to wait for some doctor to come to sew me up. And uh, I remember I had this deep, deep peace come over me. Like, it's all good. Don't, you're, I've got this. And I, I said to myself, Lord, I didn't say, I said it, I even said it under my breath. I said, Lord, you've got this. So where am I going with this? I can say that my history, I know it's nothing compared to so many saints out there. I know sisters and brothers right now that I'm even embarrassed to do this video because if I compare what I went through and go through to what they're going through, I am nothing. I'm nobody. And while doing this video, I just remembered there was a woman, a dear, precious woman. She sent me an email and I posted it. I'll put it. I'll find, I hope I can find it. And she says, brother, thank you for your video. This was a couple of years ago. And she's in China. I lost one of my dear sisters. She called me uncle. And I told her to stop saying what she was saying on Skype because I said, I came out of a communist country. I said, you're being, every word you're saying is being monitored. She said, uncle, I love Jesus. And I haven't heard from Sele, Shelly, and uh, it's been four or five years now. I don't know what happened to her. And this other sister, she said, this is what I'm saying. What I've been through is nothing compared to others, brothers and sisters of Christ, the slaughtering of Christians going on right now. But she was suffering. Her husband was beating her brutally. She tried to get away. And she says, I'm holding on. I'm waiting for our blessed hope. And another sister, I don't want to mention her name because I don't know if she wants me to mention her name. Her husband tried to literally murder her, just children. And she's waiting for blessed hope. And now because of the poison her husband tried to give her, she's her intestines were damaged severely. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on. Dear Lord, I honestly did not know this was going to happen in this video. Honestly, I didn't. I'm, I'm serious. I was just going to read this and say, be strong. But all we're waiting, Lord, even so. Why do I always do my videos with even so? Come, Lord Jesus. Amen, Maranatha. So what I'm saying, dear saints, let us be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I also want to say when I was in the underground church while in Vietnam, this precious little brother, they were so poor, went into what would look the size of a garage that you park your car, a two-car garage at best, in the sweltering heat in Vietnam. I, spent, I lived there for many years. I was among the people, living among the people, living, I was... The heat was so, sweat was just pouring down me, and they made a meal for me. And they said, we can't go back to this church because they knew I was being monitored. And I got, it's a whole different story. And they were suffering, and they loved Jesus so much. So what I'm saying is be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. God bless you, dear brother and sister who sent this email to me. God bless you, dear saint who's watching. And I'm not addressing atheist. I'm not, a, a scoffer may come on, but your curse, go your way. I'm addressing the saints, the Church of Philadelphia. And this sweet, dear soul sent back, thank you so much, Andrew, for addressing our questions. I felt you had been through quite a trial in the past because of the depth of understanding of our Lord. Jesus has given you through his Holy Spirit. Amen. When you really get to know Jesus, he'll call you out. 
And when he calls you, it's joy unspeakable. And oh, by the way, you will suffer. I also look at 2 Timothy 2.12. If we suffer with him, we will reign with him. I also concur that the trials presented to us in the early stages of life have the effect of disengaging us from the trivialities, the trivialities or trivialities, the, tri the trivial things, as she's saying, and strong attachment to this system and the present earth. Amen. I got to quote that. Do you hear what this sister is saying? This is the only way she could write this. She and her husband said this. Is she's suffering because the only way that a true saint can talk to another saint is because they've been through the furnace of affliction. They have their pilgrims. We're travelers. Why do you think I call my blog the third heaven traveler? Because I'm in Christ right now, Ephesians 2 6. I'm in him and he's in me. He, I abide in him, he abides in me. The spirit of truth, that's Jesus Christ. He abides in me. This word, this earth. It has no, I have no desire for it. And trust me, oh, at times I've yearned for this, things of this world. And my Savior said, nope. And he's taken it away in the most amazing ways. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And only a saint can talk to another saint. And this is what she's talking about. We lose that attachment to this world. We're now looking for our beloved creator. And he has always been there. Amen. And when we would wake up and our eyes opened, our heart to engage, knowing that there is no other way but him. Look how she has that in caps. Wow. We appreciate the quality you present. Thank you. God bless you and yours. Maranatha. Janet and Patrick, God bless you, Janet and Patrick, and yours. Thank you so much for bringing this up. To encourage ourselves and keep in unity, looking for our blessed hope. Again, thank you for taking the time for your wonderful words or balm to the soul. I'm going to post this video tomorrow, especially since only yesterday, Brother Christ James and I were talking about the same thing. I want to read this again. She writes, I concur that the trials presented to us in the early stages of life have the effect of disengaging us than the trivialities and strong attachment to this system and the present earth. We and have been looking for our blessed creator and he has always been there. Yes. For when we would wake up and our eyes open, our heart to engage, knowing that there is no other way but him. I'll leave you with that. Amen, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Even so. Come, Lord Jesus, amen.